3D Boxing here with undefeated Bantamweight and Super Bantamweight prospect Michael Anzaletti out of Spring, Texas. Uh, how's it going today, champ? What's up? What's up? How you doing? Good. Real good to see you. Uh, I know you were supposed to fight on that uh, Vito Malnicki card in New Jersey on Christmas. Your opponent missed weight by like eight pounds or something ridiculous like that. Uh, talk about that. I mean, what, what, what happened there with your opponent and, and you know, I mean, what happened on the scales? Man, um, we had scheduled to fight uh, at 124, and the day before weigh-ins, he asked, can we do 129? And we was like, you know, what, like five pounds extra the day before? I'm already at 124. And so me and my team talked it over, and we came up with a plan. We was like, we can take some of his money out of his check, and um, we'll come up to 129. And so he said, sure, let's do it. And that's what we said we'd do. So the next day come, and um, he's not even 129. He's 133. And so it's like he's playing games, and we just like, you know what? Let's not even do it. He haven't even been – couldn't wait like I've been couldn't wait. So we didn't want to take the risk. And my team, they all talked it over, and this, that was the decision that we made. Right. And and, and we were talking off air. You said, you know, you fight at 122 now, but your best weight probably is 118. And, you know, when the big money fights come down the road, the title fights, things like that – you're wanting mm -hmm. to fight at 118. So, you know, fighting a guy at 133 mm -hmm. is 15 pounds mm -hmm. bigger than you in the small weight class. I mean, that's like 10% of your body weight. I mean, that's that's a big difference. So, yeah, right. at a certain point, yeah, I mean, it's just too this much This guy, he, his, first, his first couple fights or his last two fights was actually at 122. And so he figured he could make 122 again. And I don't know what happened. I don't know what he went wrong at in his camp, but, you yep. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, you're out of Spring, Texas now. I know you're originally from Louisiana, but you fight out of Spring, Texas now. Um, you're a national champion. There's another national champion named Roscoe Hill, also out of Spring, Texas. Uh, it's a town of about 50,000 people. What's going on in Spring, Texas now? All of a sudden, this, this town is putting out, you know, uh, national champions. One after another Man, like this. It's just, it's Spring, Texas time. That's what it is. It's, it's our time for the little for the little guys. That's all it is. <laughs> But um, we have a lot. We have, we have we have um we have a lot of little guys that's uh, been a national champion in these last uh, few years uh, from this area. But, uh, for those who don't know, Spring Texas town outside of Houston, north of Houston, about fifty thousand people. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in the Spring area or the Houston area, Woodlands, what have you, uh, you're looking to buy or sell a home. Who's the best real estate agent to work with? Man, the best agent would be me. Uh, I can buy, I can help you buy, I can help you sell. I can put your house on the market. We can get off the market real quick. So, yeah, just give me a, a shout and I can I can help you out. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about that. Now, you, uh, you know, I know you're originally from Louisiana, uh, but you fight out of Spring, Texas. Now, can, can we call you a Texan now? Is that all right? Can we, can we call you a Texan? Um, you know what? You can. I'm half, I'm half, half right now. I'm half and half. So, it's like, I, I could be a little Texan. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, <laughs> now, you had a hometown fight, uh, adopted hometown, you know, Houston, Texas, on the Charlo Montiel card. What was mm -hmm. that like, fighting on, on a big card like that early in your career like this, um, you know, in you know, your adopted hometown? What, what was that like? How cool was that? Man, it was it was real cool. It was a really good feeling because my it was my first pro fight with fans. My first two fights before that was uh, in the bubble. And so – my third fight, I get to come home with fans. And so um, the experience was real nice. My fight was probably the second loudest because I had a lot of people from home there. They had um, Angelo Leo fought on that card, uh, Isaac Pit Pitbull Cruz, he fought on that card, and then, of course, Charlo fought on that card. And my fight was definitely the second loudest. Uh, Charlo's coming first. But uh, yeah, you, I definitely had a crowd in there. You had your Texans and your Louisiana animals, right? You had, you had your whole yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to ask you about that. You, you know, you, you're at 122 right now. You said you can go down to 118, and that's where you, you know you, you feel best at 118. Um, you got a lot of big names on the PB side there. You have Rigo, uh, you have Casimero. Um, there's a lot of big names. Is there anyone you want in particular at 118? Um, uh, only time will tell, but I think I can beat all those guys. Um, oh, and Denaire as well. Yeah. Yeah, only time would tell, but I think I'll beat all those guys. I actually helped uh, Rigandal fight uh, in camp. I helped him out uh, for his Scott's Metal fight, 
And um, based on that sparring session, um, I know that I can I can beat all those guys. And so I feel real confident about that. And, um, yeah. yeah. You had a real deep amateur career, 2018 national champion, right? Um, mm-hmm. you, you fought everyone. You won national champions. Obviously, I mean, I would think PBC wants to move you along pretty quickly and get you into the title shot, title picture pretty quickly. Um, you know, is, is there a goal in mind? He's like, I, I want to be a world champion by 2022, 2023. Right? I mean, what's what's kind of your goal? We moving, we we moving fast, but we taking our time. I would say within a year year and a half we should be we should be uh fighting for a title for sure at 118 or 122 either or, to be honest <laughs> the, sk- the skills are all there obviously um and i, I kind of want to ask you about that right because i see michael angelotti i see a tall you know tall for the weight class rangy fighter you think he's gonna fight from the outside and you can you know really quick but you also fight really well on the inside and, and you showed that um on your last fight, which was back in September, right? Yeah, um, September 4th. They were, they were body, you, you know, it's like Stephen Fulton. Like, people don't expect Stephen Fulton to be a really good body puncher. Like, you're a good mm-hmm. body puncher. You were throwing, like, double uppercuts. Like, what is your preferred style? Because like, I, I had this conversation with Fulton early in his career, too. He's like, I can find the inside. It's like, ah, okay, man. And then he can, right? And he beat um, – mm-hmm. I mean, well. what is your preferred – if I said to you, you know, describe your style in the ring – how would you describe it? Um, man, I like to find the outside and the inside. Whatever. Um, if I feel that I'm landing solid shots on the inside, then I'm going to do that. If I feel it's easier on the outside, then I'm going to send outside. Or if I feel like mixing it up and giving the crowd something, then I'll mix it up and just the, the, what they like the crowd, like what I hear from the crowd. But um, I'm comfortable in the inside and the outside. Yeah, I mean th- – it really is like you have all the tools, right? I mean, are people generally surprised on how good of an inside fighter you are? Because I think people see you and your speed and your size, and they expect you just to fight on the back foot on the outside. Are they surprised, you know, how good of an in fighter you are? Um, most people, most people are because they see the the tall, lanky. But um, like I said, I'm a big, I'm a very big one, eighteen, one twenty two. So I can sit there and I can push you back. I'm very strong for my size. Uh, I have a football background, so I did a lot of lifting, lifting weights, and I did power lifting as well. And so um, I got a real solid foundation when it comes to weight and push weight and uh, being balanced. Um, so I think all that came into play uh, in my professional career. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to ask Obviously, you had a sensational amateur career, like I said, 2018 national champion. You turned pro, you know, during the pandemic in the bubble. What made you say, okay, now's the time. Now's the right time. I want to turn pro now. Um, I had a lot of different uh, offers. And um, I did, I pretty much did all I could do as an amateur besides go to the oh, actual Olympics. Olympics. Yeah. Um, they had kind of postponed the Olympics. And, um, and I also lost an Olympic trials. And so... I have pretty much done all I can do as an amateur except for go to the Olympics. I fought in the world championships. I fought all around the world. I fought in um, Nicaragua, Poland, Bulgaria, Russia. Um, been to different camps in Ireland and uh, Great Britain. And so I pretty much did all I could do. So that it was the time. It was time. It was time to turn pro. <laughs> and obviously turn pro at the right time. Like you said, you've already, you know, th- three – you know, three, four fights in, you're already turning heads. Like, you know, you already got, like, especially the hardcores who, who like the smaller weight classes. I mean, you're kind of like the darling of, 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 you know, the smaller weight classes. A couple of guys, I don't know if you know Bam Rodriguez, who's a 108 pounder, right? Like, like wow, that's some really good young, small fighters right now um, in, in a lot of weight classes. Um, and then on top of it, you have the guys just a little, you know, a little older who turned pro a little while ago, like Frigueroa and Stephen Fulton. First of all, let me ask you, did you watch the bigger old football fight? Because that's about your weight class. Did you watch that fight? Yes, I watched I watched the highlights one. I didn't I didn't get a chance okay. to watch the full fight, but I did see the highlights, yeah. Did you think the judges got it right? Um, that was pretty controversial. Honestly, yeah, it's it honestly could have went either way. Um Figaro, he was real busy. Um not a lot of like accurate shots. He was just throwing a lot. Fulton had the more uh I guess 
higher percentage shot he was landing what he was throwing and so based on the judges it really depends on what you look at and but it could have went either way you look at those guys you know, on the same promotional side of the street as you right there you know you said you can buy 18 but 22 look at mm-hmm. Bolton and, and and those guys like i'm ready for those guys like you look at those like immediate competition like you kind of oh, gauge your um, i've been the, i've been in the ring with a, a lot of top guys already like um one guy who stays in Houston now, Shakur Stevenson, he's bigger than both of those guys, and we yeah. put in a lot of we put in a lot of rounds together. So if I'm going 10, 12 rounds with him, then I definitely could take the smaller guys, Fulton and Figueroa and Donaire and Rigadal and so on. And so, um, like I say, yeah, sparring these guys, my confidence, is, my confidence is all the way up. And um, Rigadal, he's one of the best at 118, and then I got Shakur that I spar as well. He's the best at 130 and so i'm i'm, I'm ready for these guys <laughs> when you have that kind of spar i mean you just named two olympic medalists right there right two rigo's a hall of famer shakur stevenson it's, right. it's on his way he's got hall of fame skill you know he's really, mm-hmm. really young i mean when you spar with those guys and then you go on the ring is it like this is easy like I, i've sparred with literally oh, the yeah, best definitely. When in I the get, world. yeah when i get in the ring with other guys it's definitely easy um way easier um Especially with uh, Shakur, I, I learned a lot with him, a lot of his uh, tricks and stuff like that. I learned a lot, and I added to my arsenal. <laughs> so, I, I wanted to ask you this because people are surprised by this. How is Shakur's power? Um, he has he has decent power. Um, I've heard people say it's pretty snappy. You don't really think of him as a big hitter, but I've heard people say he's got pretty good power. He got he got decent power. Um, I feel like um, I don't think it's like crazy, crazy, but he definitely got he got some pop. Um, most of all, he's he's a technician. That's the main thing that I notice. I don't really notice his power. Uh, I notice okay. his uh, technique and his his, his uh, sharpness, his distance, and uh, his reflexes is really good. That's the main thing. His reflexes are, are incredible. I mean, it's, it's almost yeah. impossible to hit, right? How how do you yeah. do them? I mean, you, you, you hang in there, you hold your own we, with him. We, we, we spar all the time, and so. Yeah, <laughs> he called. He called me. He called me asking for work because he's in okay. Houston. I guess there's not a lot of little guys um, around his side, so he can get work with. Or the people he work with, he stops them. And so I'm the only guy who's gonna go, and we can go rounds and rounds and rounds. I'm that good, and he's that good, and so we just keep going. But uh, yeah. <laughs> and like that, you are that good, right? Like, and um, at 118, you have to be to really catch attention that you you. you you can't just be pretty good. You have to be special, right? Um, do you look at like, okay, I can go 18, 22, 26. You know, do you say how high can I go and how many, how many, because it's a matter of when, right? How many world titles am I going to win and how many different divisions? Um, First, like my main goal is 118 and 122. And um, as long as I'm making that weight comfortably, uh, there's no need to go to 126 unless I can't get any fights at 18 or 22 then we'll move up to 26 but um and they got plenty of time for you at 18 and 22 like this yeah, um and what if the time comes and i need to move up and then i move up so it just depends on what my body tells me too um again it, it's been a it's been a pleasure watching like you kind of burst on our scene you know i guess it's been it's been about a year right since you since your pro debut right yep yep last yeah December. yeah this last December. And uh, yeah, you've been one of the best young prospects to watch. Um, when are you going to be back in the ring? You know, when can we expect you back in the ring? Man, um, after this letdown, <laughs> uh, they told me to um, prepare for six weeks. So we still in the gym. I was in the gym today. We back in the gym. Of course, I ain't taking no damage. I didn't fight. So we just going to maintain and uh, stay in shape and uh, just get ready for the next one. Yeah, what what happened? Your opponent missing weight by that much and everything. Uh, and you still went to camp. You still made the weight. How frustrating is it to put in all that work and then, you know, your opponent doesn't make the weight? Oh, it's very frustrating. But, um, you know, everything happened for a reason. Um, I'm a firm believer in that. And so, you know, I just got to roll with the punches on that. Of course, I wanted to fight, but you never know what God had in store for me or what could have happened. You might be saving me or saving him from something. So it's all good. Keep it moving. So, February six weeks puts us into February. Um, 
I don't know. That, is that are we talking the Barros Thurman card or, or 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 do you not know yet? Is it are they gonna let you know? Oh, I, I don't know yet. Uh, I okay. don't know yet, but that's I, I'm pretty sure that's a possibility. <laughs> Who you got in that? Barrios or Thurman? Man, I don't know, know, that's, that's a good fight. I don't know. Keith Thurman haven't been in the ring in a minute. So I don't, I honestly don't know. Barrios is he's I like Barrios. He's young, you know. Another, another Texas. Yeah. Yeah, another Texas. San Antonio, I believe, right? <laughs> San Antonio. Yeah, um, so, um, it's like it's been a pleasure watching you. We're gonna see you about six weeks from now. Uh Michael Anzaletti, let everyone know where they can find you on social media. Oh yeah, uh Instagram team underscore Angeletti and uh Twitter Angeletti underscore number one. I don't, I, and uh yeah, I, I wanted to ask you is there you know we looked at the at the landscape of one eighteen. Is there one particular champion that you want to fight? Like I know maybe we're a year away or whatever, but like is there one I know you know Rigo, he doesn't have a belt right now, but he is kind of still the man at eighteen. There's Denaire. Mm. Is there one that you're kinda of eyeing more than any of the other? Like that's the one I kinda of wanted to throw. Not really. I know they got also uh in the way, I think that's how you pronounce in a way, it. Yeah. Yeah. Any 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 of the top guys. I don't really have a I just wanna be the best. I wanna fight the top guys eventually. So no no one in particular. First time I saw you fight, I said that's a that's gonna be a multi division world champion. Don't don't, <laughs> don't 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 make me don't don't prove me wrong, right? You gotta you gotta win. I need at least two two uh two balls out of you, eighteen and twenty two. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. It's it's coming. Matter of time. <laughs> Michael and Letty out of Spring, Texas. Uh, thank you for your time, champ. God bless. Thank you. All right.